Ramsay's Right Royal Roundup. Your Majesty. <laughs> you're so, you're so dramatic. I love it. I'm, I'm very, very dramatic. I've watched a lot of Dallas and Dynasty in my life, and uh, yes. uh, uh, yes. that that that's where a lot of it's come from. And of course, The Crown. How are you? We've so much to talk about this. I morning. know we it's, really do. It's, it's just unbelievable. So um, we need to get through absolutely everything. So let's start. Um, with the health news, because I think that's arguably been the biggest story of the week. So uh, Princess Catherine, the Princess of Wales, uh, entering hospital. Now, they, she, it was said it was for a planned surgery. However, if it was planned, I don't think it was planned for now, because, of course, she had to cancel engagement. So I wonder if it was something brought forward. So we have that uh, surgery, which she's going to be in hospital for up to two weeks. So it's clearly something very serious. We've also got King Charles with his enlarged prostate, which, you know, that's not very pleasant either. Um, you know, the two are very senior royals out of action at the same time. That's massive, right? Yeah, I think it's um, not something we expected in, at the, the beginning of the new year, obviously, because it feels like a bit of a setback. But I do think that everyone is grateful over the fact that these are considered non-emergency medical issues. Um, both the King and the Princess of Wales have suggested that their planned public engagements are delayed, not blatantly canceled. So they do anticipate getting back to work. The King much faster than the Princess of Wales, who says that she will be back sometime um, after Easter. Uh, but I, I did, I really liked the statement that they um, released specifically for Catherine because, you know, she was a very apologetic over the fact that she wasn't able to make those specific engagements. And, and the palace was really clear that their request was that we not speculate. Um, she specifically asked for her personal medical information to remain private. And uh, I, I'm definitely going to respect that um, because I will tell you there have been other people that have been like, Sh shouldn't we be really worried? And I, I said, I'm not gonna play into that game because the palace asked that we, I mean, this is so unbelievable that they've been so forthcoming with information. I'm grateful for that. And that's what I'm gonna take. Well, I think that that it's something serious but you're right what it actually is shouldn't be speculated upon we will be told more if we need to be told more i think all the and let's not also forget the context of this because the last time that the the Catherine, Princess Catherine was in hospital or one of the last times when she had that severe morning sickness um Let's not forget the two radio DJs in Australia who decided to ring the hospital and managed to extract information about how she was doing, pretending to be the Queen. Do you remember that story? And I do. Horrible. It was, it, and it ended up going everywhere, and it actually ended up, you know, you, you think that it might be an invasion of privacy on Princess Catherine, but of course it, there is collateral damage around that, and, and that story ended up in the uh, suicide of the the nurse that 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 accidentally gave away that information so i do think that the media and social media needs to be respectful around this and and we'll be told something if and when we need to be told something right Agreed. And that's what the palace said. They said that we will receive an update when there is something to update us about and that you know from but it's funny how and i'll say this to you because you're my friend it's funny to watch the way that people are trying to create stories around it um complaining about well the, here this is this is king charles's fault this is what he gets for having a slim down monarchy uh and try and like the panic over it the express saying who should step up who should it, should it be princess anne 
should Prince Harry come back over? Like, so, you know, the, the slim down monarchy is not working. The slim down monarchy concept is a decade, if not decades old. It started recirculating once Charles inched closer to the crown. What we are witnessing today is not King Charles removing anyone from the fold. We've seen death, we've seen scandal, and we've seen betrayal weed out members, key members of the royal family. So I would not blame King Charles for a lack of senior working members at this point. And I also wouldn't make something out of nothing. These people aren't paramedics, they're not fire people. They're going to be fine having Sophie and Anne and whoever's available at the time to, no, to I, step I, in. I think, I think where there is a story, and we may disagree on this, is that the slimmed down monarchy that was envisaged, I don't think is the slimmed down monarchy we had today. We have today. No. Because the slimmed down monarchy that we have today is actually slimmer than I think was originally envisaged. And, and you're right, that isn't the fault of the king slimming it down. You're quite right. He didn't envisage Harry and Meghan leaving the fold. He didn't envisage uh, the Duke of York not being a part of things and um you know and obviously losing the duke of edinburgh the the the, the 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 late duke of edinburgh um and the queen as well that's that's five members of the family that have gone in a, in quite a short space of time and i think that 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 it is that that has caused concern and it is a reminder that there aren't that many senior royals that can actually take on these duties now assigning blame for that i think is wrong but it is a fact right but i mean is there is somebody losing out on a huge opportunity because the king isn't going to show up next week to open a hospital or to shake hands with well-wishers outside i just think we need to have realistic expectations no, I, I think i think it just exposes a wider problem about perhaps the fragility of the whole thing i think that's what it is i don't think it's about ribbon cutting not being done i think it's just a reminder that look you know it would only take heaven forbid you know a, 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 a terrible thing to happen to two of the most senior mo uh, people and and you know the house of cards could be close to collapsing do you see what i mean and i think it's it's i do it's but, that, um, that, but this, it, it, that this is exposed i do but two years ago two senior working members of the royal family left in scandal harry i mean harry like harry's almost four harry's four years ago now um but we've we lost harry and he accused his family of being racist and we lost andrew because he hangs out with a pedophile um so we we've survived worse is my is, is we've survived it before is is my theory like Absolutely. we can and i don't think that there's any question that it won't be it won't survive i just think it is a demonstration of quite how fragile it is in numbers until um, we're in a situation where Prince George and Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis also are of an age that, that, that they are then working royals because I just think it's exposed that, well, there aren't that many of them. That's all. And I think that that's, right. that's a part of it. Well, you mentioned Harry and Meghan. Uh, well, Prince Harry uh, has, has had a, a week of ups and downs. Now, let's talk about the downs first, because um, we have this £750,000 that we think he's going to have to spend based on the pulling out of this libel trial with the Mail on Sunday. Is that right? Yeah, just a little. Um, we are so immature. I'll text you later what I heard when you said that. But oh, okay. uh, Prince Harry was pursuing a libel claim against the Mail on Sunday over articles about his security arrangements when returning to the UK, with the newspaper alleging that Harry was trying to keep it a secret from the public and um, keeping this, this clash with the government, that he was challenging the government over his security. Uh, and that... Um, so when he decided to withdraw the claims, he was ordered to pay the mail on Sunday's um, attorney fees, and then he has to pay his own attorney fees. So collectively, that's going to be, we expect to be about $750,000. Um, but- that, Because, sorry to jump in, but the, just to, so anyone who doesn't know, but the mail on Sunday had reported that essentially 
Prince Harry in this argument with the government over wanting his security paid for, um, he was trying to either keep it secret or I think also s sort of PR. He was it. trying to spin it yeah. PR wise that, that because they don't they found in the papers prior they searched through the prior papers and they couldn't find Prince Harry offering to pay it himself. Okay, yet when. Prince Harry was talking to very specific public, uh, uh, you know, uh, PR, very specific publishers and not the mail on Sunday. I think it was the Associated Press. I can't remember who he spoke to, but he his attorneys gave someone a quote, but his attorneys would not respond to the mail on Sunday. And the quotes that he was giving other media outlets was that he was offering to pay uh, and that paperwork didn't exist prior to those statements going out to the media. And that is the point that the, the mail on Sunday had made in their articles. The, interesting that he is now claiming that he offered to pay for security himself that's not what we have seen throughout our investigation you know is he trying to spin this you know to to look more like a victim like he's being so unfairly treated when he's offering to cop up the information and what i thought was really interesting was there was a communication between queen elizabeth or between queen elizabeth's private secretary and someone it's an it, within the paperwork submitted where he says that harry said during the sandringham summit that neither him or megan had the finances to pay for their own security and so perhaps he did withdraw because there was evidence like that that existed where he, those were those were comments that were made that he couldn't even afford it so why would he tell media that he had offered to pay for it when realistically there was proof that he did not have the funds to be able to even afford that type of security at the time. It is bizarre that he would be so sure, because this of course, let's not forget this case, his lawyers at one point tried to not even have a trial for it because they said... Yeah, that they said was, just, will you just dismiss it? Yeah, that, will you rule in our favour because it's so... Um, uh, because our evidence is so strong that Prince Harry is telling the truth that you shouldn't even even try this. You should just find in our favour uh, with just the evidence that we've presented to you. And, of course, then it was supposed to go to trial and he's pulled out at the 11th hour. Now, he is still pursuing four other claims at the moment, isn't he? So we've got the claim alongside Elton John and Doreen Lawrence of unlawful information gathering against associated newspapers so that's the same group uh, the publisher of the daily mail and the mail on sunday that's march that that's expected we've got a case alongside hugh grant alleging unlawful information gathering against uh, uh, other newspapers as well that's january next year we've also got the next stage of phone hacking cases against mirror group newspapers uh, and then also the claim against the Home Office regarding his security arrangements in the UK. Um, we're expecting a ruling for that this year. Do you know what? For someone who is desperate to just live a quiet life of philanthropy and looking after his family, he certainly seems to be pursuing an awful lot of litigation. Yeah, I don't... I think that he thinks... He wants this to be his legacy. He wants people to remember him for changing the laws and changing the way that media works and my issue with that is that he's doing the same here in the united states you know this is a an individual that says the first amendment is bonkers is not a legal citizen technically and uh w is working with the aspen institute on on uh, what he want what they would like new regulations for social media communication to be like don't come over here and use your title to try to change our laws so i think ultimately that's what he wants his legacy to be to change the way to change the media landscape he must find it absolutely just so awful when he has to then give an interview to major news outlets to promote whatever tat he's trying to sell people then and create a Well, that's why he only goes to the friendly outlets that don't circuit. challenge him. Yeah, you can't have it both ways. I mean, certainly if his privacy was invaded with phone hacking and things like that, I, you know, fair play to him. I, I think he has every right to 
complain about that. But this sort of constant micromanaging of his image when it comes to the case he's just dropped or the, the case against the Home Office and things like that, I, I think is, is, is just ego. It's just ego. I mean, who cares? I wouldn't have, because I don't think anyone reads everything in the newspaper with them and doesn't take it with just a little grain of salt about anyone. Especially today. But, but, but now, what he's done is he's taken a massive spotlight and just shone it on this entire story. So, from a strategy... They call that, they call that the Barbara Streisand effect. When she was, she did not, there was an, a man that was photographing the coast... Yeah. And he just wanted pictures of the coast. It had nothing to do with Barbara Streisand. And uh, Barbara Streisand did not want a picture of her house in this encyclopedia of images of the coast that this guy was creating, so she sued him. And now everybody's, like, talking about Barbara Streisand's house, its exact location. And, you know, what she did was she magnified the issue by suing this guy, and she absolutely loathes the fact that it... Now we call that the Barbara Streisand effect when somebody does that. she It just riles her up that it... it she, she This is what... She's become That's the Barbara the Streisand, Streisand effect. effect. I'd heard the Streisand effect. I never knew that that was what it actually was. Well, you're absolutely right then. This is prime example of the Streisand effect. And, of course, now everyone's saying, well, God, well, then did he spin this story? And if he hasn't got the evidence, gosh, well, maybe his PR was trying to, to do all of this. Whereas you wouldn't have really given it a second thought before. So... Again, I don't know who's advising them or I don't know whether they just don't have a communication strategy, but it does seem bizarre and it seems to, to just reek of ego. And Do you remember when we were watching the Netflix docuseries how we, wa we walked along with Megan as she was suing the outlet over Thomas Markle's letter? Yes. And how we saw how frustrated she was, ha hands on her head, you know, crunched over her laptop and how just so overwhelmed and truly consumed she was with this. My argument is that I don't think he was unprepared. I think they, they you know, this is my, my opinion. They love to be right. They are so stubborn, the both of them, and they want, they love to prove a point. I feel like they stumbled upon something that they realized would not be a positive reflection of them. And that's why they withdrew because they, it's fair play if it's out there in the court of law. And they didn't want somebody else for, you know, similar to the finding freedom. Yes, I, I was about to say they've had, they've had their fingers burned before, haven't they? Because, of course, yeah. they ended up being exposed as not being completely honest with their contribution towards the Finding Freedom book, and that was in court papers previously. So perhaps, you know, once bitten, twice shy. Now, um, Prince Harry, though, was out without Meghan, um, I think it was, was it last night or the night before last? He was being... Yes, it was last night. Yeah, it was in Beverly Hills, the Living Legends of Aviation Awards that honoured him. Um, the Telegraph did initially report that Harry and Meghan were going to be there together. I mean, it was blown up all over the place. The, the communications department for the Living Legends of Aviation Awards saying that this was Harry and Meghan's first official red carpet together in Hollywood. The way that they promoted this was, you know, we, we were going to see them. So people were surprised when Harry not only showed up without Meghan, who, who he said stayed behind because one of the children was unwell, but snuck through the back door and didn't even walk the carpet. Um, so was Meghan there or not? Meghan was not there. But, she did but not Prince Harry go. snuck through the back door. Yeah, so Prince Harry snuck through the back door, didn't even walk the carpet the carpet after all of the promotion that both of them were going to walk the carpet. No one walked the carpet. He snuck in through the back door, leaving all of the people that showed up to cover him there specifically disappointed. Um, he accepted his award from John Travolta, which we discussed before. We knew that they had established a friendship together. Of course, he evoked the memory of his mother because we knew that that was coming as well, discussing Travolta and his mother on the dance floor. Well, let, 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 let's hear that bit. Let's, let's hear okay. what Prince Harry had to say to John Travolta. So John Travolta was presenting him with this award, and uh, then Prince Harry made a joke about the time when John Travolta and Princess Diana danced in the White House.
thanks very much, Captain John. Don't go running away. I was one year old. I was one year old when you uh, danced with my mum. <laughs> As you told everybody here, I'll we'll continue to dine out on that probably every single night. Um, but look at us now. It's great. So if we're not going to dance together, we'll fly together. That's it. Thank you. We don't. <laughs> um, I'd like to start with a a heartfelt thank you to the living legends of. So there we go. That was uh, the joke he made about uh, John Travolta uh, dining out on the story of his mother dancing uh, with him. Um, I mean, <laughs> dining out on his mother. I mean, what do you make of that, Kinsey? So pot meat kettle. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. But he is his mother. I mean, he is allowed to dine out on his mother quite a lot, isn't he? Yeah, no, but he definitely milks it. We get it. I mean, we predicted that that's what he was going to do, so I, it's it's fine. But um, it was interesting because Lauren Sanchez was also honored, and she wrote this gushing tribute and thanked you know thanked everybody. But she basically referred to Harry and John Travolta as living legends in the in, in the aviation industry and, and change makers. And I'm like. Girl, you know as much as anybody else that both of you were invited because a, you're but because of your of your plus ones, <laughs> they didn't want Lauren Sanchez. They wanted Jeff Bezos. They didn't want Prince Harry. They wanted Meghan Markle. Okay. Uh, now, just quickly, because we've only got about a minute left. Caroline Graham, the journalist, was there and said that she actually felt really sorry for 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 Prince Harry. Why do you think that was? I'll tell you exactly why that was. It's a really great article on the Daily Mail. It, because he's become like the sideshow. Uh, first of all, he's got pictures with a fake royal. The only like the only selfie of the night is a fake royal. And this guy is, a, according to the the actual royals that he leeches off of allegedly, he's a scam artist. Sells you know QVC style things. Is a reality TV show you know kind of loser. So that, that, that's the picture that that uh, he, his mother married into royalty, so he ended up taking the title of prince and was adopted as a 23 year old <laughs> man. Yeah. To turn that Hallmark movie off. But anyway, she's basically saying like he's like the giraffe at the little kids party that. You you know, he's a, he's he's just kind of like this prop that he's you know it's he's not known for his accomplishments. He's he's just this kind of prop that shows up for all these rich people well, to touch and feel. We would, we would you're my prop, Kinsey. You're my prop, and I'm hoping that you're proud to be so. Lovely to have I you am. as always, Kinsey Schofield, with the Right Royal Roundup in the next hour. Thanks, Kinsey.